to uh, share with you today about um, the base of the pyramid and information and communication technologies. So I figured that you know more about the information and communication technologies because we are all information scientists. And um, for today, what I want to spend time doing in the mini review one is to um, introduce the base of the pyramid and also talk about the origin, a little bit of history, and then um, the key players in terms of what I found out in the uh, literature, who are those influencing this area. And um, then I will look at, probably, if time allows me, to show you a little video clip of um, just the case in the field that some people are working on. And then for the mini review too, I really want to spend time looking at uh, sample ICT, uh, ICT tools that are being used in the field. So of course I will take questions if you have them. So for my introduction, um, we are part of a global society and we understand that we are a network of peoples. Peoples with different cultures, different uh, demographic information. So we have pieces of information that we collect about people. So if we collect demographic information, like I said, name, age, date of birth, ethnicity, and so on. Also, the, the field of economics collect other set of data or information about people. They collect information about their a, not age, but economic information like um, workplace, income, and uh, social classification of upper class, middle class, lower class, and so on. The base of the pyramid is a socioeconomic grouping. So it talks about people that was first defined by um, one of our presidents, President Roosevelt. He actually mentioned about the bottom of the pyramid in his address in 1932. That's the first mention of the term in literature that I found out. And in that address, he talked about the forgotten man. And he said, these unhappy times call for the building of plans that rest upon the forgotten, the unorganized, but the indispensable units of economic power for plans like those of 1917, I briefly looked at that, that build from the bottom up and not from the plans that build from the top down, that put their faith once more in the forgotten man at the bottom of the pyramid. So remember that 1932 was the time of Great Depression and the forgotten man was actually the people that really were so impoverished. So in that address, he looked at how to build from the bottom up to be able to reach this group of people. And of course, the goal was to be able to take everybody through the depression. So in this segment of the base of the pyramid, I want to introduce the recent key players. There is a name that if you look, maybe Google or do um, a search on, his name is Prahalad you will see so many citations of this person. And I was curious, I said, who is this person? So the first thing I did was to read a little bit about his history, because I noticed that he wasn't American born. So I said, what makes him so knowledgeable about society? Was he a sociologist? I thought he was a sociologist. But as I went into the literature, I found out that he's actually a business strategist. He is uh, a professor at the uh, University of Michigan Ross School of Business. And of course, he has also opened companies, Praja Incorporated, as well as um, become CEOs and consultants of so many other organizations. So I was curious about also his colleague, uh, Hart. Hart is currently at Cornell. He is the one that is uh, the head of the uh, enterprise that looks at uh, people 
as well as uh, the base of the pyramid effort in different parts of the world. He's actually the one helping multinational corporations to be able to go into these regions. Uh, those are the main two players, and they've written so much about it. They've written books, and one of the books that I first saw written about the base of the pyramid by these people is called Strategies for the Bottom of the Pyramid, and this is Creating Sustainable Development. They were the co-authors. And the needs of the base of the pyramid, of course, you know, are considerable. And what I'm going to do in the second review will be look at cases, which in the case of Burma, I don't know if you're familiar with Burma, Burma is in Asia. There's so much crisis going on. Um, a regime that is actually part of the country, supposed to take care of the people, is destroying, destroying the people. The case of Liberia is a case that they have just finished 25 years of war, and they are now trying to use ICT to rebuild. Dr. Machonini sent me the reference, thank you. So it was very good reading. There is also the natural, natural disasters that I want to look at in terms of how we're using information and communication technologies to rebuild these areas. So in my second review, I will also probably look a little bit about the tsunami as well as the Katrina of, uh, of uh, 19, or 2005. Then there is uh, a book written by Hart himself. He he's put out the second edition this year, and it is uh, Capitalism at the Crossroad. He's talking about uh, removing constraints and allowing people to uh, focus on the environment. He's brought up the concept of the village phones that will help people to become more, um, more, more, more independent in terms of uh, being able to provide for their needs, using it for business communication, and also even medical cases. He has talked about how the village phones can be used to help uh, provide sustainable development. So here in this part of the discussion, I just want to talk about the fact that um, Prahalad and Had have encouraged multinational corporations to not look at the base of the pyramid as you know, victims. They should be looked at as you know, value-added consumers and as entrepreneurs. Now, these authors are trying to make us understand and be aware of the base of the pyramid regions, and they are trying to create information. That is what I'm finding, you know, I'm getting out of this. Information about the base of the pyramid, helping us to think differently about these regions. And as an information scientist, what I see here is information poverty in this region. And of course, information is penetrating through cell phones and other information communication and tools that we are using today, but it is slow. And so I tend to uh, uh, apply uh, Chapman's concept of the insiders and the outsiders, that the people that are inside, which probably are the multinational corporations, the research labs, and all of us that you know, are outside or are, that are inside have the information. And they are the outsiders. The base of the pyramid communities are impoverished in the area of information. And I look at them as the people probably that will fit into the outsiders concept. So here I want to just briefly explain ICT. Most people think of ICT as computers, but Rob King or Kling uh, is, is one of the uh, core authors and research in the area of social informatics. He has actually put out a definition that I like and I want to share that with you. He talks about information as you know, moving even beyond computers, but artifacts, 
the practices for recording, organizing, storing, manipulating, and communicating information, and they include telephones, faxes, photocopies, books, and journal articles. And of course, he's written many books. I'm reading one of his books currently. He has done some uh, research in the areas of uh, schools, how schools implement information uh, and communication technologies. There is a case in, in uh, Texas that he has written extensively about what were the things done right and what were the things that were not done very accurately that made the project not to succeed. So those are the things he has been able to impact many regions of the United States in his research. And of course, one important factor that we all know that is the way we use information and communication technology, we use it differently. So you can put out maybe an application. The way you know Cindy uses it is different from the way I might use it. So that is something we have to bear in mind. And of course, as we go into uh, as, uh, applying or asking the BOP people to take these tools, take this uh, information uh, capabilities and use, they, they will have different ways of applying them to their needs. So having read so much about you know the BOP, I started reading about actually how to work and do research in developing countries um, like when I was teaching high school. Because I mean, as a teacher, to walk into a classroom and not have a computer lab was a challenge. And when I found out that students who came in and really enjoyed the environment of a lab and the computers and the interaction they had made me to begin to look at these areas. So my main questions are the ones I have displayed here. And for now, I just want to let you see that the digital and information communication tools can help the BOPs. So what I want to look at is how are we using them now? Are we able to penetrate these markets? The organizations and the stakeholders that are penetrating these areas, are they able to effectively use information and communication tools to help with development. So in using information and communication tools to influence development, I want to also look at the fact that we use ICT tools like mobile phones and other tools, computing tools to be able to collect, store, disseminate, and and provide information to users. And of course, all stakeholders in the base of the pyramid, basically they are research labs, universities. I know Cornell is very big in the base of the pyramid. The University of Michigan Ross, uh, Ross School of Business, they are also very big in it. These organizations have put together rules to govern them on how they operate in the base of the pyramid. I just want to share a couple of the conducts. They, they discuss about operating guidelines and conducts, and one of the, a few of those are that you use the most appropriate and sustainable technologies. And then you promote the development of affected communities as broadly as possible in ways defined by the local people themselves, which probably will be one of the keys to the success of the main uh, entries as opposed to what was happening 10 years ago. And also to share best practices with local partners to extend, uh, to the extent that is possible. So the people at the ground are very involved. And the focus of ICT also is for col collaboration as well as for innovation. The fields of research that is going on in the BOP areas um, actually have a lot of research data or literature about India and China. Um, these two areas actually 
are the ones that many of the multinational companies are going in today. So I find that the literature is scanty about regions of Africa and South America. And of course, uh, one of the areas that the University uh, of Michigan as well as uh, Cornell is looking at is India. So if you look at this website, we have a lot of um, cases. In the case I wanted to just play for about a minute for everyone to hear is the case of e-governance. Last minute. Oh, last minute. Thank you. just let you listen to the e-governance that is, is just about a minute segment that talks about how um, one of the group in Michigan went to Andhra, India. So that is what he's talking about, that to use information and communication technologies to create um, government services that is available to everybody. So that will help the people, instead of waiting in line for you know, a day to get a form for applying for a driver's license, the service will be made much smoother for the people. Okay, we're going to have to uh, move on without questions. Um, um, we can uh, keep those. You can send, send, them, me send, email. send me email if you have questions, please. Thank you.